thinking out of the box, looking at the massive investments needs and, and challenges ahead. We will talk about uh, financing sources for municipal solid waste management. Maria Salvetti will uh, introduce a workshop in a few minutes talking about this. She will set the scene. But in addition, we, we also have to think about how to reduce waste, how to produce more efficiently, and how to change behaviors. For example, it might be by extending uh, producer responsibility or by promoting the adoption of economic incentives in order, when this is possible, to internalize costs that producers have been allowed to pass on the environment, taxpayers, and people's health. We've got fantastic panelists today, and I'm sure we will have exciting presentation and discussion. So thanks a lot to everybody to be here and to be present today. Before to move to the two sessions, uh, Maria Salvetti will set the scene of municipal solid waste and bio waste uh, financing issues. And just before this, if uh, Fabio is online, Fabio Tambone from Harera wants to say a welcoming words to the participants. Fabio, are you here? So I don't see Fabio, so if Fabio is not uh, connected Let yet. Let me check. Um, Maria. Let me check. Fabio will thank I don't see yes. Fabio in the online room. We will try to get him back uh, uh, as soon as okay. possible. So Maria. We'll, we'll start right yours. away then. And Fabio will have uh, some time to, to, to say a, a few words at the, uh, at at the, the end, end of the, the seminar, uh, I'm sure. Um, so we'll start uh, right away um, uh, for this uh, first uh, session. Uh, on financing models um, uh, of uh, municipal waste management. And I'll, um, uh, I have pre prepared a, a few slides uh, really to, to set the scene uh, for, for this first session and sort of to introduce uh, uh, the topic uh, that uh, our speakers will uh, further develop. So bear with me, I'm putting on the presentation. There we are. Okay. So can can uh, Stefan can you see my screen? Okay, good. So let's go. Um so really setting the scene pre it's, pre it's pre a black it's a black screen. Oh, until sorry. Now. Mm. What about that? Yes, it's, it's taking sorry, some so time. I thought it was okay, but uh, So we've got a black screen only. Um, I suggest you try again, making sure when you share the screen that you select the PPT preview. Maybe. Okay, I think it's. Can help. And by the way, Fabio Tampone is with us. Okay. Fabio, do you, would you like to say to say a word? Yes. Do you hear me now? Absolutely. Yes. Go sorry ahead. for sorry for this uh, very complex uh, but easy way to 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 speak. I first of all, uh, uh, I'm uh, Fabio Tampone. I'm in charge at the uh, Italian uh, uh, regulator for the international uh, uh, relations. And I would like to bring to all participants the uh, welcome uh, words of our board, Italian board, and uh, as well as the uh, waste reg, which is the uh, network of uh, uh, growing network of uh, waste regulators around Europe. Uh, I think this initiative, this second initiative, uh, is a sort of a consolidation of the work we are doing in the Florence School of Regulation, which I thank very much, in particular Maria and Stefan. Uh, and I think this should go on uh, in a very consistent way, also for the next year. I think that uh, the uh, dialogue uh, among uh, regulators, uh, operators, academic, uh, uh, you know, world, it's uh, it's a key issue to uh, bring messages to uh, European uh, uh, institutions. I think in this particular, in this moment, also for water, uh, these sectors really need a, real, a, a big step up. So thank you again and have a nice day of work. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fabio. Um, so indeed, this is the second um, uh, workshop that we, we're doing uh, on waste because we, we've launched this new um, uh, area at the, the Florence School of Regulation um, together with uh, the, the area uh, dedicated to water that, that does exist now for a, a few years. And, and um, 
in the previous uh, workshop, we already obviously uh, touched upon uh, the, the, the key upcoming challenges um, for uh, municipal solid waste. And, and, and with this uh, specific um, webinar, we wanted really to have a, a, a deeper uh, focus on um, uh, the economics uh, and the financing that, that, that goes uh, with the municipal solid waste sector and also with a, a, um, a focus on, uh, on bio waste uh, as well. So to introduce the, the, the first session, which is going to be on the financing of um, municipal solid waste, a, a, a few slides uh, showing some facts and figures. And I, I'll, be, I'll be also sharing later uh, uh, before the second session, um, uh, uh, additional slides uh, showing some facts and figures for uh, bio waste. So, um, well, uh, municipal solid waste, you know, although it's, it's only 10%, uh, if I may say, only 10% of the total waste that is generated um, uh, in the EU, um, it, it is a complex, it is a complex uh, topic, it is a complex matter, because of the diversity um, of the, 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 the economic agents that are producing uh, this, this type of waste. It is complex also because of the, the, the different materials that do compose um, municipal uh, solid waste uh, and it is also complex because um, it, 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 it is really linked uh, with um, consumption behaviorals, and it's also linked, obviously, with uh, economic uh, growth and, and decoupling um, the generated waste and um, economic growth is is really um, uh, a key element. It's it's also uh, uh, an important topic. There are quite a lot of um, um, EU West legislation requirements that are upcoming um, and that are uh, concerning uh, specifically um, uh, the, um, uh, the, the, the municipal solid waste and, and the various uh, streams uh, that, that do compose it. So, so there, there, there are some, some key challenges upcoming. Um, it's, it's also complex because uh, obviously there are uh, various uh, modes of uh, collection uh, for this municipal solid waste. Uh, there is door-to-door -door collection, there is a commingled door-to-door -door collection, bring points, civil amenities, uh, site, deposit and return. Each of these collection um, uh, modes do correspond to a specific stream or to many streams. Um, and uh, of course, uh, there is uh, some uh, issues of frequency. There is some issues of economics and financing that are different from one collection mode to the other. So that's where you add up uh, some, um, some complexity uh, into, into the picture. Um, also, obviously, on the treatment side, there is uh, some complexity because obviously you have uh, various uh, treatment uh, modes uh, that are linked, obviously, with the um, EU uh, waste legislation requirements that I mentioned earlier. Uh, so there are quite a lot of um, uh, investments and efforts uh, that have been made and that still need to be made <laughs> to reach and to provide. Uh, with um, uh, the, the, the targets in terms of uh, treatment uh, of uh, municipal solid waste. And of course, we're, we're, we're sort of uh, focusing and narrowing uh, the, the, the picture to, to the economics, which is uh, really the core of this first session with the financing sources. So you have uh, one way to look at it, which is a, a macroeconomic way. And this is uh, the, the, the slide that you have uh, in front of you, um, uh, taking into account the various financing sources between the user charges, between the taxes that come uh, from um, a public budget, whether it is municipal, regional or national budget, Budgets. You have the EU funding coming, obviously, from uh, the European level funding, so supranational funding, and you have those uh, also those schemes, those fixed schemes, EPR scheme, extended responsibility of the producer schemes. So, but this is really a, a macroeconomic look at the sector, and this is something that we have already touched upon uh, during the first. Um, waste a webinar and, and that um, has been a, a bit developed taking into account the available uh, information into a policy paper that was produced ahead of this uh, first uh, waste webinar and that you can still find online on the on the on the web page of the the, the event uh, on the fsr um, website so this is the macro uh, kind of look and and there is also the microeconomic look that we are going to really be discussing um, uh, this morning, uh, which is really the tariff schemes, you know, uh, we, we focus on the user charge and we look at what 
is, is doable, what is done, what is um, uh, bringing incentive to reduce uh, the streams of, um, of waste, um, what is um, uh, uh, producing more uh, recycling uh, and less uh, landfilling, obviously, because this is where this is the direction that we have to go for. Um, so I I'll, I'll, will not dive into more details because we're going to, to be talking about that and I don't want to be uh, um, um, taking uh, the, 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 the topic of the, of the, um, the speakers that are going to, to, to come later on. But we're really focusing on this uh, tariff schemes and on this uh, user charge uh, this morning. So I'll stop here. And uh, uh, right away, I'll leave the floor um, to uh, Antonio Masaruto from the University of Udine in, uh, in Italy. Yes. Uh, so, um, Antonio, you have the floor. Thank you. Just a second for sharing my screen. Absolutely. Uh, where is it? Okay, I hope you can see it. Yeah. I have to... Perfect. ...to switch the... ...this way, okay? Is it? Perfect. Can you thank see the screen? For... Okay, thank you very much for inviting me. It's a, it's a real pleasure to be here again. Uh, so I, uh, I'll try to focus my presentation on uh, the evidence uh, that comes from the Italian case uh, concerning a very specific question that concerns uh, the way we uh, regulate uh, the access uh, to treatment facilities. Uh, with us, uh, I'll try to say a word on bio waste uh, more, uh, more in particular, and uh, the economic reasons that uh, justify uh, why we have to do this and how we can do this. Uh, uh, I, I think that uh, we, we must start with uh, a couple of words uh, uh, concerning how the circular economy paradigm is uh, changing dramatically the focus of waste management services. Uh, uh, remembering that we are dealing with waste, that is something that has a negative value, something that we are paying someone to get us rid of. And uh, otherwise, uh, if uh, if waste, uh, if uh, recovered material had an economic value, they would not be waste. The circular economy is about minimization of waste flow. The bet uh, around the circular economy is that the combination of uh, uh, decreasing costs of uh, sorting, preparation for recycling, increasing value of market value of materials, and increasing cost of dealing with waste in the traditional way. Uh, increases dramatically the scope for valorizing uh, municipal waste flows uh, and reducing the flows uh, going to landfill or going to uh, uh, other uh, other kinds of residual waste management, including uh, waste to energy, bio waste, and so on. But circular economy is does not mean that ultimate waste uh, uh, will not will will disappear. Okay, uh, uh, waste will not disappear. Uh, uh, but uh, waste management services, as, as we know them, will, will more and more concern with uh, residual waste, uh, which means uh, providing a last resort solution, which is hopefully reducing its size. Uh, uh, and, and, and we have uh, quantitative targets uh, to reach by 2030. But residual does not mean small. Residual does not mean negligible. So uh, waste facilities uh, will continue to be needed for a long time. And uh, waste management services uh, are alive and kicking, let me say, uh, 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 despite the uh, attempt that we are making to, uh, to reduce them and, and to look at waste flows uh, in, a, in, in, a, in a different way. Uh, so, uh, waste services have, uh, uh, in, in the last uh, few decades, uh, have changed uh, their uh, nature uh, so many times, okay? They started as a simple uh, uh, services con concern with uh, urban tidiness, uh, and we are now talking of a circular economy. And many uh, intermediate steps uh, can be also detected. I don't, I don't have the time to elaborate uh, too much on this, uh, but uh, we are now in the uh, transition phase between, the, uh, between uh, at least in Italy, uh, we, we are still uh, recovering from the disaster 
disaster, the disastrous cases of Naples uh, and Rome, but we are also uh, trying to, to jump uh, to, uh, to the new world of the circular economy, uh, which uh, talks about uh, uh, material valorization, recycling, and so on. So uh, a long time, what uh, uh, the, this uh, evolutionary change has changed dramatically the focus of the, of the service, the nature of public service obligations, as you try, as you can see in this uh, uh, in this picture that uh, tries to, to, to show how uh, different uh, uh, kinds of uh, targets of poly economic policy targets and environmental targets uh, are uh, uh, being uh, uh, imposed one one above the other. This has has, has changed everything uh, concerning institutional levels involved, uh, the management regimes, uh, the disposal techniques, uh, the kind of uh, transactions that uh, uh, structure the industrial organization and the value chain of the industry, uh, the the role of the private sector, and so on. So uh, um, uh, it is uh, this. I emphasize this because uh, other, uh, we we need to understand how this new world of the circular economy is changing the economic nature of the transactions that take place along the value chain in order to understand whether we have to regulate them or not. Uh, I usually uh, like to, to divide, uh, to, uh, to distinguish three sections uh, along the value chain. This is what I refer to as M1, M2, and M3. M1 is uh, the collection market, the last mile, the service provided to the, to the citizen, which is the original service, okay? M2 is treatment and disposal of unsorted waste. Uh, and this, uh, in Italy, it is typically managed uh, through a vertically integrated uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, regime in which a collection operator and disposal operator have, are the same company or belong to the same group, uh, or at least have some, uh, some, uh, some degree of vertical integration. But this is not achieved everywhere. Uh, we, we shall talk about this later. M3 is instead the recycling and valorization market where the uh, the the forerunners uh, are for sure the uh, 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 responsible organizations put in place by industry in order to fulfill the uh, 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 ambitious recycling targets that the legislation poses poses so focusing on um the uh, I, I must focus here on the, the relations between m1 and n2 which is the main main concern of my presentation today okay so the, the question is whether we should regulate gate fees for the access to treatment facilities or not and uh, how should we do this so there uh, in fact economic the the, the, the regulatory economics uh, provides us with the very clear guidelines uh, about whether and how to regulate uh, uh, regulate prices and regulate uh, industrial behavior in a in, in a in any industrial sector so if if the sector is sufficiently compat compat competitive uh, there is a, a lively competition in the market, and this is compatible with the private, with the public service obligations uh, that we wish to impose. Then there is no reason to regulate. The, it is just a matter a matter for the antitrust policy that of uh, uh, taking care that uh, competition is sufficiently live and uh, and there are enough uh, uh, competitors uh, entering the market and and so on this is not necessarily uh, uh, provided by a number of competing operators in the market we can have also alternative uh, solutions like uh, contestability or increasing increasingly side competition many say there is no reason to to regulate gate fees because uh, in fact waste producers uh, have many different options one is to dispose of the waste in the incinerator on the in, in the in the treatment plant but the other one is uh, uh, promoting more recycling so if recycling is a competitor to disposal then we do not need to regulate uh, to regulate facilities on the other hand uh, uh, the, the the reasons why we should instead are the pres are, are, are provided by the existence of natural monopoly conditions uh, which arise from uh, the, the structure of the cost function or from the existence of barriers to entry that limit the possibility of competitors uh, to, to enter the market or from the existence of essential facilities uh, that provide a bottleneck uh, 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 the, uh, 
uh, and uh, whose uh, uh, whose uh, ownership uh, could uh, allow some market power to to operate. So it is a much more a matter of uh, empirical uh, evaluation. Uh, which is very contextual, very much uh, case by case, uh, and very much depending on contingent uh, political, institutional, and historical conditions. There are countries in Europe, uh, like the Netherlands, uh, where the conditions for having a lively market uh, 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 for, uh, for uh, uh, disposal facilities is uh, more or less achieved as far as I know from my Dutch colleagues, but I, I, I wish to learn more about this. Uh, for sure, uh, Italy is a country in which uh, uh, many bottlenecks arise uh, for different reasons. Perhaps uh, some of them are institutional, like the self-sufficiency principle that binds every territory to using, uh, 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 at least as a, as a preferential solution, uh, facilities that are realized on the same uh, territorial areas and which reduces uh, quite a lot uh, the, uh, the scope for competition. But in, or, uh, in, in order to understand uh, uh, the, the, the answer, uh, why not or why yes, we need to, uh, to, to, to enter into a more detailed analysis of the real world market situation. Okay, And we must uh, ask us, uh, 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 three separate issues. How the cost is charged to final cons to customers? Uh, where is the cost arising from? What, so what are the kinds of transactions along the value chain from which the cost to be recovered arises? And how are these transactions regulated? Are there market-based uh, transactions or is there any uh, any other any, any other uh, any other subject? So uh, there is a sort of a paradox in the waste industry because if you look at the different phases collection, uh, treatment, and so on, uh, uh, it seems uh, not to, 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 to fit any of the, uh, of the test uh, uh, indicators that economists normally use uh, for detecting natural monopolies. This is not a natural monopoly industry. Facilities are small enough uh, to, to allow uh, uh, the scope for competition in the market. Uh, maybe this is not that true for incinerators. Uh, we have to consider also a transport cost, which are uh, very relevant. But when the cost, uh, when the gate fee uh, uh, is above, uh, say, the, the threshold of 100 euros per ton, then there is also much more scope for for trading waste across boundaries and across country, countries. And this is uh, uh, witnesses, uh, witnessed by uh, the fact that uh, a, a lot of uh, waste trading, uh, even for, uh, for uh, energy valorization, takes place in Europe. In the case of bio waste, uh, it, 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 this is not so much true. But in Italy, for example, we are assisting to, a, to, to, to a, an imposing, uh, an increasing flow of waste from the south to the north. Uh, so at least an, as a, on an interregional basis, uh, there is a, quite a lot of, of waste trading. So what we uh, what we uh, assist to is not uh, a natural monopoly in the traditional uh, meaning, but a sort of a de facto monopoly for residual waste, which depends on the fact that the market is very thin. The number of operators is very small. This is perhaps a combination of, as I said, the self-sufficiency principle and also the fact that for one reason or the other, it has proved to be so difficult to, 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 to build new facilities and, and to realize new facilities uh, uh, timely enough not to, not to, to find uh, ourselves in, in, in an emergency. And this is dramatically true for Southern Italy uh, especially and for Central Italy also. So this is the reason why we are uh, 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 we, we are assisting to such an imposant uh, 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 trading from the south to the north. So um, uh, you have a couple more minutes. Yes. So I I, I, I skip this part about uh, so uh, the, um, uh, the so um, let me perhaps go directly here. Okay. Uh, in Italy, we have uh, we come from a regime which is uh, 
uh, historically based on the concept of uh, legal monopoly uh, attributed to essential facilities individuated by the regional plan. Okay, The regional plan in the past was uh, uh, in charge of selecting and to addressing waste flows to plants and facilities where uh, were attributed a legal monopoly and uh, uh, were, uh, uh, were supposed to, to charge a regulated price. But this, in, in the end, uh, never took place, uh, uh, at least not everywhere, not in total. What we uh, see uh, on the market in Italy is either direct integration, which means facilities uh, directly owned by the operator, but uh, uh, very often outsourced to, uh, to participated companies and therefore with transactions that belong to the category of transfer prices uh, uh, intergroup, okay? Uh, and in this case, uh, the cost uh, directly ends in the, in the waste uh, service bill through the internal transactions uh, uh, of the operator. Sometimes these uh, this prices are regulated, like in Emilia-Romagna, but sometimes they are not, like in Lombardia or in Friuli. In all the other cases in which the operator do not have access to, to, to facilities that they directly control, we are in the far west. Okay, uh, we are in the in, in a situation in which uh, uh, um, operators must rely on spot prices, uh, on uh, very short-term uh, transactions, uh, and this is a very thin market, as I said, because. Uh, even if the number of facilities is relatively large, as you can see in this uh, table, uh, a few firms, uh, most, of, most of the facilities belong to operators uh, that are using them for their, for their own purpose, but do not uh, have enough spare capacity to, uh, to, to, to sell on the market. So the only operators that can sell extra capacity on the markets are very few. We have three firms controlling 80% of capacity in large waste to energy facilities. We have, again, three firms uh, controlling more than the half uh, of the combined aerobic and anaerobic capacity for bio waste, uh, which is uh, the only type of plants uh, that can uh, uh, effectively uh, uh, market their capacity, uh, sell their capacity to the market because uh, other plants are too small uh, and uh, uh, do not uh, do not achieve uh, 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 an adequate uh, level of uh, uh, of price in order to be uh, to to afford the long distance transfer. So this means uh, that uh, the this thin market combined with uh, the uh, uh, increasing need for uh, for disposal means that uh, for uh, in, in the south uh, we are, have experienced in last year uh, gate fees for bio waste uh, facilities rocketing at uh, 200 or 250 euros per ton because this arises from the fact that uh, uh, tenders uh, were very were very easily left uh, desert uh, and uh, as, uh, uh, a very opaque market ma made by uh, uh, um, brokers and then trading operators uh, has emerged. So uh, I think that uh, uh, the uh, Arera has uh, has focused much of its attention on M1. Okay, they have spent most most of the resources of the regulatory resources until now on regulating the contracts for collection and separate collection and street cleaning and so on. This is important, of course. Uh, but in fact, uh, this is the part of the market that, in my opinion, uh, creates uh, lower problems. It is very competitive. Uh, we have uh, uh, tendering processes uh, in uh, more than a half uh, of the national industry. Where we do not have it, we have uh, in-house companies uh, that more or less uh, recover their costs, but again, outsource uh, quite a lot of their uh, labor-intensive services. What uh, we are really in the need of uh, is uh, 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 an effective regulation of uh, uh, an effective regulation of uh, uh, gate fees and, and disposal market uh, to cope with uh, the situation that I have uh, described. Uh, the, the point is that we, we should not over regulate it because uh, uh, we have a sort of I, I finish a sort <laughs> okay. of a dual uh, problem in which uh, we must, uh, uh, I think that the case is very similar, and this is a provocation to the discussion, very similar to electricity generation, in which we have uh, uh, the, the need to increase as much as possible renewable resources, in this case recycling, but 
with the, the, the with the constraint that no blackout should occur. So we have enough. We must have enough uh, traditional capacity in order to avoid uh, uh, having waste on the street, as in Rome and, and in Naples. So this means that uh, this residual market should be managed uh, through innovative instruments. For example, capacity payment uh, uh, or uh, contracts uh, that combine the essential facilities uh, providing public service obligations uh, to the territory and something else uh, uh, which uh, is sold to the uh, to, to, to the market and but the, this should be a more regulated market and not the kind of far west that we have experienced so far so uh, if I uh, if I had enough time I, I I would also present the kind of solution that I have in mind but, but, this but is the, the, probably you know what, Antonio, for, for another we, time okay no, I, I but we, we can keep that for the discussion because this this the, the, the okay, kind of solution that, can that, definitely that, be discussed that, uh, that's, that, that's that's fine. Okay, so <laughs> thank I you can, so much. I, I can finish here. Thank you so much uh, for uh, your uh, attention. Well, it's, uh, thank you very much, Antonio. And, and um, the possible solution can, can definitely be part of, uh, of the discussion just to, to, to trigger the exchanges if, if, if we need to trigger them, because I'm sure that there will be plenty of them. So um, um, uh, while you, you stop sharing your screen, uh, Antonio, I will... Yes. Um, I will introduce our yes. next speaker, uh, Paolo Ferrao from uh, Lisbon uh, University. Paolo Ferrao was already with us during the, the, the first uh, Waste uh, webinar in July. So I really want to thank you very much, uh, Paolo, for being with us again. It's, it's a real pleasure to, to have you again uh, uh, as a speaker. So the floor is yours. Uh, I can see your, your, your screen. So I think we're on the, the right track. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. The, the pleasure is really mine. And I would like today to be very focused and to spend my five minutes in only one question. So, which is indeed something that we are working now in Portugal, uh, which is to try to, to discuss this intertwined uh, objective of decarbonizing the economy on one side, and then also to promote circular economy by uh, making use of uh, waste management. And here's something which is, uh, I think, very critical is uh, if we make use of anaerobic digestion, how to find a fair tariff for methane that is produced by anaerobic digestion? Well, as a strategy to produce these renewable gases that then we can, for example, inject in the natural gas pipelines. So, and this is what uh, I would like to discuss. Uh, it is very clear that it's not new from the communication from the commission in 2017 uh, that they obviously mentioned the recovery of energy from waste uh, supports the objective of the circular economy and also that public financing of waste management uh, should uh, of course be consistent with the goals of sh shifting upwards the implementation in the EU uh, waste uh, hierarchy and also as I will show in the next diagram that the development of combined energy recovery and material recycling capacity in the form of an aerobic digestion could represent an attractive management option. And indeed, uh, the Commission put forward this diagram, which in a certain way can be interpreted as uh, uh, the anaerobic digestion contributing to recycling, because of course, uh, the anaerobic digestion of uh, organic waste, where the digested is recycled as a fertilizer, but then also where we produce a fuel, which is methane that can be used in the economy as well. And then this is kind of an upgrade of simple incineration, for example. And that's the way we are exploring it uh, in uh, right now. And something that I have been uh, trying to, uh, to, to identify, as I mentioned previously, and I would like to share these very simple calculations with you today, although there is a lot of work in another thing that I will also share with you, uh, is this uh, simple reasoning. So how to determine this fair tariff? Well, it is easy to make some calculations uh, that uh, if we have uh, the cost of not doing. So if we just uh, get some bio residues and we dump it in the, in, the na in the nature, for sure we will get about two tons uh, of CO2 equivalent uh, release by the fermentation of these bio residues in nature. And also if we consider a CO2 price uh, uh, in the ETS market of 25 euros uh, per ton of CO2, this would mean that the cost of CO2 associated to just uh, depositing the residues in nature, it will be about 550 euros per ton. And then uh, considering that uh, 
uh, if in a biodigestion plant we uh, can obtain about 47 to 50 kilograms of methane per ton of bioresidue. So we come to the conclusion that eventually it is fair to say that uh, the positive externalities associated to the production of methane by anaerobic digestion are on the order of one euro uh, per kilogram of biomethane produced. Um, and then if we consider that uh, if we buy natural gas, so and we consider a price of 0 0.4, 0 0.5 euros per kilogram, so it would be, again, safe to say that the tariff for methane generated by bioresidues could be of about 1.5 euros, 1.5 euros per kilogram of biomethane, just in order to substitute the, the import of methane and to benefit from not uh, having CO2 production. But then, of course, there are many other uh, added values for these endogenous production. And I think we could assume that a tariff of uh, from 1.5 to 2 uh, euro per kilogram of methane produced by anaerobic digestion would be fair. And of course, this would produce this uh, renewable gas, what we call may call renewable natural gas that we could inject in the pipeline. And this would indeed avoid emissions from, uh, I don't know, uh, industries that consume it and that are uh, in a certain way uh, associated to the ETS. Then we have made a very extensive study, a more difficult one, uh, which is to say, well, is this amount enough or not to justify an investment in an aerobic digestion plant uh, with, uh, equipped with the purification of methane equipment? Uh, and then we have done these calculations uh, together with the manufacturers and so on. And uh, I will just simply uh, show you that indeed, yes. So, but only for capacities of over 30,000 tons per year of bioresidues processed. Uh, and uh, typically with the support to the investment of about 50%. So, these are the calculations that uh, I've been doing during the last months. And uh, of course, that I would uh, like to share with you uh, to submit to your judgment. But I really think this is an interesting pathway forward. And I look forward to the discussion in the forum. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Paolo. That's that's um, uh, very very interesting uh, indeed to have those uh, those figures uh, that that can really um, be helpful to 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 trigger the the the, the discussion and conduct the, the discussion. Thanks a lot. And um, so I'll I'll now uh, turn to um, Gianluca Taparini from uh, the Operate Foundation uh, in uh, in Italy. So uh, Gianluca, uh, you have the floor. Um, I guess you can share your slides if you if you have some slides. Yeah. Okay. We're starting to see your screen. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank okay. You. So good morning, everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here uh, this morning uh, to present the work that we have uh, developed inside the Urban Agenda Partnership for European Union on Circular Economy, work about uh, pay as you grow. Uh, this work is uh, a part of an action uh, on incentives so to circular economy in waste management. Uh, Obviously, uh, the most important incentives uh, are, uh, for example, VAT or EPR. But uh, we have focused uh, on pay as you throw because, uh, uh, firstly, the other two uh, were already analyzed and defined by many studies uh, from other institutions. But uh, above, above all, because they, they don't involve a city level, that was the perspective of the Urban Agenda Partnership. So we worked on uh, pay as you throw. And um, we see that uh, to use economic in instruments like pay as you throw is uh, recognized uh, by uh, both uh, EU Commission and uh, cities all over Europe to support the systems of source separation and better resource management of waste. Uh, the problem that we have seen is uh, that this scheme, even if it's really effective and positive to reach these objectives, it's not so widespread all around Europe. Therefore, 
and we wanted to check why this is happening and which are the obstacles to set the system of pay as you throw in the right way to work. Uh, so we have defined um, a kit of instruments, a toolkit uh, that could help city uh, to implement pay as you throw systems by looking at other experience in Europe, uh, uh, what uh, they have done, uh, which difficulties, difficulties they have faced up and uh, so on. Uh, the group that has worked uh, on uh, this publication is uh, led by uh, the city of Prato and formed by all the experts of Operate Foundation. Uh, today, I don't want to, to go in details of the toolkit uh, because there is no enough time, but uh, if you want, you can uh, download freely the, the publication from Operate Foundation website. Uh, so I will give you only uh, some flesh about uh, this publication and uh, above all uh, explain our proposal about uh, an advanced model on, uh, of uh, pay as you draw. Um, so uh, as I said, uh, pay as you draw was considered the most effective option for source separation and uh, an essential first step uh, to produce clean waste streams. Uh, so by offering door-to-door -door collection and uh, electronic, electronically tracking rubbish and recycling with citywide, this scheme could increase re recycling by relevant percentage. Uh, pay as you draw system so rewards people and business who separate the rubbish and penalizes those who do not, of course. Uh, so uh, if we want, uh, we can have a quick look to the uh, toolkit content that is composed by all elements necessary to implement a pay as scheme. So, as you can see, we, are, we can find regulatory, technical, IT, and of course, communication sheets with uh, all detailed uh, guidelines. Uh, we have uh, analyzed the many different ways to apply pay to throw and we have tried to define the minimum conditions and the best practice to design a model to start this method in a city and that fits in every situation. Uh, the application proposal aims to offer an adequate balance between operational detail and the possibility of adapting to different contexts as may be found in various member states of course ensuring compliance, this is a point, an important point, with a polluter's flat pays principle. In this way, each European city will be able to identify the pay as you systems that best suits in its territory, knowing in advance the advantages and disadvantages of every, every feasible uh, solution. Of course, uh, also technology is very important. Uh, but uh, I want to uh, tell one important thing, that it's relevant, relevant that using appropriate technology for pay as you throw could be also an opportunity uh, to apply smart city approach to urban waste management. Um, going to the models, uh, as I said, we have tried to design some models uh, uh, three, three, three models. Uh, the most applied is the minimum model. This model, uh, in this model, municipalities measure only mixed waste produ produced by user. Uh, this, me this method is the simplest one, of course, but it could reach only the objective to reduce mixed waste. Uh, so. Uh, we have considered the, a best practice model uh, where also other waste streams are measured, one, two, or, or more waste streams. Uh, applying this model, we can not only reduce uh, the quantity of waste produced, but also we can increase the level of waste separation. But uh, just, of course, this is a preferred med method, but uh, we we wanted to propose something more, a more advanced model, based this one on CO2 production from waste. Therefore, we could exactly measure the real impact of different user behaviors. Uh, in order to make 
the system of a different model clearer and simple uh, we, we have found some cases uh, based on different level of uh, application so we can create a space in which to learn about uh, and discuss uh, the topic with experts and entities that, that have already made the, tran the transition to pay as you draw. The different cases represent different contexts. Uh, as you can see, small cities uh, or big cities, touristic or industrial areas, uh, uh, different countries and so on. And um, in some there is, uh, uh, it, it's applied the minimum model or best practice model. And in the last one, in, in this uh, uh, table, uh, you can find the municipality of Monpeo, where we have the experimentation of the advanced model. But what is exact, exactly this advanced model? It is a simple and effective method where each type of waste determines an impact with relevant environmental and economic advantages. So that means that uh, uh, a progressive uh, improvement in citizens' behavior and, of, and development and uh, of an increasing green civic uh, sense because each one could know the impact of, of uh, his behavior. For example, in, uh, in experimental period last year, in a small municipality, uh, we have uh, measured a certified, and it's important, certified, a reduction of 2,352 tons of CO2. Uh, that is not only a very good environmental result, but also give uh, a possible or economic returns by allowing municipality to obtain CO2 credits. We have seen in the previous uh, uh, relation that uh, one, uh, one ton of CO2 is uh, uh, valued at 25 euros per ton so in the US market. So it's it's very good uh, result. John Luca, uh, you wrap up, please. Okay. Uh, we can see uh, some graphs that shows also another result. So the, uh, the deviance uh, uh, between the fees, uh, between correct and inc incorrect behavior is. Uh, uh, wider in um, in a model uh, advanced model uh, than in the other models so yellow line and blue line and go uh, uh, fast this is the two of the two municipalities the la last things to say is we, we can see now here uh, that in uh, in the two municipality Montpeo and Terrier Overesque municipality for the two different uh, model pay as you cross standard and pay as you advanced we can see that the gap between average reduction and average increase of the fee uh, goes from 20 euros here and to uh, 265 euros with uh, pay as you throw advanced model and uh, we arrive from also to um, from 40 euros till versus 107 euros. So uh, um, furthermore, we have another effect. It happens that about a quarter of users switch from an, an, an incentivized fee to a penalized fee and vice versa, thanks to the good behavior in the overall production of waste resulting by CO2 products produced. So I believe that these are we are important elements for the purposes of accounting fairness in order to reward the users who actually determine a lower impact. Okay, so I, I've concluded. So thank you. These are my contacts uh, to keep in touch. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gianluca. Thanks a lot. Um, I'll um, I'll let you uh, yeah stop sharing and then I'll um, I'll ask uh, Ignacy Prig Ventosa from Fundacio ENT uh, from Spain, uh, well to take the floor and um, and make uh, his presentation. So I see Ignacy. There you go. Can you share your screen? Perfect, thanks. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, 
Um, can you see my screen? Now the sound is, is a bit low. Do you think you could get... I'll try to speak louder. Um, is this okay? So it's a bit better. Okay. Um, well, I've been asked to present the, the situation of uh, waste charges in, in Spain. Um, and basically I will present the overall situation, uh, uh, focus on pay as you throw, which is still rather new in, in Spain. And finally, a conclusions on a couple of resources that we've produced, and I hope they can be of interest for the audience. Uh, basically, uh, from Fundación End, we try to uh, maintain an inventory of the situation of waste charges uh, among Spanish municipalities. And what we do is uh, to conduct an annual survey of 125 uh, municipalities um, in order to to evaluate the, the evolution of these waste charges. Uh, in Spain, waste charges, municipal waste charges are not compulsory, although the vast majority of municipalities have them in place. And when they are in place, they, they can be levied by municipalities or by other local authorities on their behalf. Um, gener and revenues cannot exceed the cost of the, of the services. Uh, this is by law. So uh, what we do, as I said, is, is to conduct this, this survey of 125 municipalities of different sizes. Uh, we capture all the provincial capitals, but then a uh, number of municipalities also smaller. What we do in order to compare the, these waste charges is to define a standardized household and six types of uh, standard, standardized commercial activities in the, in the last report, we have increased this to, to 11. And then we can see what would be the tariff that each of one of these households or activities uh, would, would pay. And uh, well, first thing to comment is that uh, when we um, discuss about household uh, waste uh, charges, still the most common situation is, the, is flat fees. Uh, this is confusing uh, from time to time but still is the most common. Then other municipalities also use uh, location within the city, property value, water consumption, or other, other criteria. And, and a very limited number of municipalities, probably already below 5%, still don't have any type of, of waste charge. As for commercial waste charges, most common criteria to define them is the type of economic activity which is sometimes also modulated by the, by the area of the activity or by some type of indicator, such number of tables, number of workers, or, or some other criteria. And we also find that uh, some of these weight charges have uh, fiscal benefits, uh, tax credits, and the vast majority of them refer to social criteria, for example, income or if there's any unemployed in the family or this sort of criteria. And only uh, around 5% of these um, fiscal benefits relate to environmental criteria, such as the use of recycling centers or um, the performance of home composting at, at home. When we go to the a more quantitative analysis, uh, uh, the average uh, waste charge uh, in, in Spain for household is around 82 euros per year. But we find a lot of variety from taxes, well, actually from zero to more than 200 euros per, per inhabitant, depending on the, on the municipality. If we see the situation in, in relation to commercial activities, uh, again, we see that the situation is very different according to the type of activity, which is something that we, we could expect. But uh, what is interesting to see in this, in this figure is the fact that municipalities in J5, which means uh, larger municipalities, in general, charges are higher than for, um, for lower, uh, for, for, munis for smaller municipalities. This is quite surprising as we should expect that in large uh, municipalities, we should find economies of scale, and this, in principle, affect or reduce, should uh, reduce the overall costs, and this could be reflected in 
in charges in the worst charges but this this is not the case rather the contrary and, uh, and this gives uh, some room for speculation and discussion the why this situation is like is like this and uh, as in the case of household waste charges uh, and even more for the case of commercial uh, waste charges we find a huge variety of, of, of tariffs um, for example for bars or restaurants ranging from just 5100 euros per annum to almost 5000 so the, it depends a lot on the on the municipality completely there's a complete lack of, of harmonization within the country coming to to pay as you throw uh, in spain we have uh, basically so far um, around 17 uh, maybe 18 with some of the new experiences in the Basque country uh, experiences of pay as you throw when when we uh, i mean i'm referring to pay as you throw applied to both household and commercial waste. Um, so out of more than, than 8,000 municipalities in the country, it's, it's a really, really tiny percentage. Uh, we have some other experiences uh, of pay as you throw only focusing on commercial waste, the more significant one in, in, in Barcelona. Um, so anyway, the experience is, is, is still very uh, emerging. And um, most of the situation, most of the pay as you throw schemes applied so far are based on paperback. But uh, we also have some paper rim uh, identification schemes uh, like in Surville or Villa Blarech or Bardu. And these are becoming more, more common. I would say that uh, now that ID, uh, identif user identification technologies are, have become more available, this, uh, these uh, experiences will become more more common in the metropolitan area of Barcelona. We are also we also ha having some municipalities which are now um, locking the, the street containers and considering the possible application of pay as you throw in the upcoming years. In general, what we see when pay as you throw is is applied is a net reduction of the overall municipal solid waste generation is, is a possible slight refund uh, rebound sorry in, in the in this year um, part of this might be due to waste tourism but uh, most of it refers to adoption of best practices and also uh, possibly the fact that some some users that were using the containers inappropriately uh, are no longer collected within the We also see an increase in, in separate collection in, 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 in percentage, not so much in absolute values. And probably the most significant trend is a quite significant reduction of, of the production of refuse. Here a couple of, of pictures uh, from Musurville in the Basque, in the Basque country where, where they created these so-called uh, totems where, uh, because this is an area with uh, significant high uh, urban density. Um, and then uh, below the typical picture of a paper bag scheme with standardized um, bags in, in, in Argentina. <clears throat> Some conclusions to, to finalize. Um, a solid base, uh, solid financial base for waste management system is, is crucial to provide uh, sufficient resources. Um, and this is much needed for the challenges uh, that are coming due to European legislation and also national legislation. In Spain, municipal uh, waste charges are very heterogeneous in their design, a lot of uh, variety. And the average, uh, as I said, is 20 euros per household per year in 2015, only slight increases in, in recent years. And um, overall, or in general, revenues do not cover the costs. Um, we estimate that they are around 60% more or less. Um, legislation in Spain allows for the inclusion of social and environmental uh, criteria in the definition of the, of the waste charges, uh, but this is not largely applied so far, uh, especially paid, is, as I said, is still in a very early stage. So um, now we, 
we expect that these systems uh, increase in the upcoming uh, years and we see an increasing interest from from municipalities and finally just a couple of, of resources um, that we developed in in recent years a guide for the implementation of pay as you throw that is uh, can be both both these resources can can be found in english as well so a uh, guide and then a more more recent uh, resource last year we provided this we created this guide uh, on user identification for municipal collection in high density contexts, uh, particularly relevant for the application of pay as you throw in high density areas. And that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ignacy. Thanks a lot for this uh, very, very interesting um, uh, presentation and some, uh, I mean, a, a very, very interesting outlook of uh, uh, what's happening uh, in Spain with regard to uh, the, 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 the financing, but not only the financing uh, of, of waste uh, with, with a broader picture. Thanks a lot. I'll, I'll now um, turn to uh, Patrick Hazenkamp from the city of Munster in, uh, in Germany. And Patrick, the floor is yours. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Marie. Maria. Uh, my name is Patrick Hasenkamp. I'm managing director of AWM, that's the municipal waste management company of the city of Münster in the northern parts of Germany. And I'm also representing the interests of municipal waste uh, management in Brussels as president of the Municipal Waste Europe uh, Association. Oh, do you see it? Okay. I'd like to introduce uh, you in a, a fast run to the German system of uh, fees for financing all the waste management on the municipal level. <clears throat> and this is one of, uh, I think, uh, one of the, sof uh, the sophisticated uh, systems of waste fees in our city. It is, uh, uh, we have an annual basic fee for every household based on the municipal status, it's actually uh, 60, uh, 36 euros per year. And uh, it's uh, the same fee, either the household is one person or it's six persons. So it's a very family friendly system. We have a performance fee for uh, the provided bins. We have three, uh, four bins for the door to door collection. And we uh, realize the volume scale with a linear progressive graduation. For the residual waste, it is 3.9 uh, euro per liter of volume. And for the bio waste, it's uh, 3.1 euro per liter of volume. The fees are collected from the property owners. It's very common uh, in Germany, together with the municipal taxes uh, on the wastewater fees, for example. In, in Münster, it's possible to uh, share your bin uh, in a shared neighborhood bin in adjacent uh, properties. And due to the demographic uh, development, it's also possible for small one person households to use a single bin that's a virtual uh, reduction of uh, the standard bins. Uh, we think that our system has some uh, advantages uh, for the social components. Uh, it is for people, uh, especially living in families in large residential complexes or apartment buildings with this uh, basic fee. It is a very uh, family friendly system. Uh, for us in Germany, it's very important that it is legally secure and with this uh, progressive uh, part of the performance uh, um, in, the, in every bin, we have an incentive to avoid waste, waste prevention, and we have an incentive to recycle waste with the waste separation possibilities we have realized. The including services for our uh, waste management is of course a regular collection of uh, residual waste in a gray bin as a full service, so we bring and we collect the uh, um, bins from the grounds and bring it back to the houses. Uh, that is uh, done every, uh, it's by weekly collection of residual waste. We have a weekly collection of uh, the wet bio waste uh, or the kitchen waste. And uh, the bio waste bin includes an annual cleaning service. We provide a blue bin for bi-weekly collection of paper and cardboard free of charge. 
We provide an orange bin for the biweekly bi -weekly collection of uh, recyclable fraction as packaging material and other reusable materials from the households. We provide a monthly collection of green waste free of charge and the garden waste and a monthly collection of bulky household waste free of charge. And in addition, everyone can use one of our 11 recycling stations uh, free of charge for uh, other um, waste streams, um, CDs or plastics from garden furniture and everything. These are the actual uh, container or bin fees. You uh, see uh, the graduation from the uh, smallest bin of 35 liters provided up to the biggest common one for uh, households, it's 1100 liters for apartment uh, blocks. Uh, so you can uh, easily multiply the 3.90 euros per liter with this, uh, um, with, a, uh, with a bin volume. It's the same structure, it's on bio waste for the weekly collection. The average annual fee in Münster for a, five, a four person household is uh, 221 euros, actually all inclusive. And I have to apologize, it's a German uh, picture. Um, I didn't translate it uh, uh, as fast as possible. Uh, we use uh, the fee mainly for uh, the treatment and uh, disposal of all residual uh, waste. We have uh, roughly 21% uh, used uh, for the um, collection of uh, waste. We only need 8% for the digestion and biogas production of the bio waste. We have 7% uh, for the treatment and uh, collection of uh, um, paper and cardboard. Bulky and household waste is only 5%. Uh, the green waste composting only is 5%. And so you see everything is uh, split up for this 221 euros per year. And everyone can see it on our homepage, uh, very transparent. It's a very uh, important information for our citizens. That was a fast introduction into our fee system. It's a very common system in Germany. It's not actually a real pay as your source system, but it's uh, also with this uh, volume uh, based system, you have uh, an, a real incentive or a good incentive uh, for waste prevention and recycling. You see that the recycling bins are mainly free of charge and uh, we have only the residual waste as the most expensive uh, fraction uh, brought to the citizens. So, considering the time I had left, uh, thank you very much for your attention and don't hesitate to ask your questions. So, thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, uh, Patrick. That, that, that's a, a very, very uh, enlightening uh, presentation and, and uh, experience sharing. Thanks a lot for that. So uh, I'll turn uh, right away um, now to one of uh, our discussants uh, for uh, this, uh, this session, actually our discussant, sorry, for, for this session, uh, Valérie Plenmaison, who's the Secretary uh, General of FEAD. Um, the European um, Association of Depollution uh, Activities. Uh, so, Valérie, um, uh, you know, looking at all these uh, presentation and listening to all the, um, those uh, examples, um, uh, do you have any uh, reaction, comments, thoughts uh, that you'd like to 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 share with us uh, regarding? Uh, for instance, the um, uh, the the the, the um, uh, tariff schemes uh, that that uh, are being applied either uh, uh, in uh, the city of Munster. Uh, there's some some comments about um, uh, the situation, the variety actually of a situation in um, in Spain. Uh, any any comment with regard to uh, regulation regulation? Sorry, aspect uh, really of. Um, uh, the, the, the the treatment uh, of the the residual waste as as um, uh, as was um, um, underlined by by Antonio Masaruto at the, at the very beginning any um, uh, ideas with regard to uh, some of the, the 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 costing of the CO2 and the, and the externalities uh, you know mentioned uh, by by, uh, by Paolo I'm sure I'm I'm, I'm forgetting stuff so uh, I, but you know just, just try, trying to to sum up uh, some of the topics 
that, that were touched upon. So uh, the floor is yours for, for, for sharing uh, comments, <laughs> ideas, questions. <Okay. laughs> Thank you, Maria. Thank you a lot. Um, the presentations were really very interesting. Congratulations to all the, the, the speakers. Um, I represent FIAT, the Waste Management Association, the private companies. So I first mentioned that there were very good thoughts and, and, and indications given to the role of competitive markets and of competition and of call for tenders for having the best service for the best price and also for having private investments because the public um, can't do it all. Uh, and the private does it well. So one, one first remark. Uh, second remark, as you mentioned, there is a big variety of situations in Europe uh, good models everywhere or, or problems in other places. Uh, there is not a one-size-fits-all solution with regard to uh, financing models or um, selective collection schemes or things like this. So when it comes to EU regulations, they did and they do a lot for more recycling, more selective collection, more, 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 more. And, better waste management, but they need to take into consideration this very uh, variety. It leads me to say that we know that the uh, European Union or European Commission think about harmonizing selective collection scheme, um, maybe to align the best in the class to the other ones, or, or we don't know exactly why. But we need to be very careful about harmonizing situations in a context where there is so much variety and where we see that there are very different um, frequencies, we, uh, very different systems, a very different capacity to pay. And we see that with the pay as you chose schemes, which are very interesting uh, systems. Uh, and which are compatible with the very system existing at local level. If there was an EU system uh, forcing everyone to use certain bins, certain frequencies, certain so and so, not everyone would be able to align immediately. That would put a lot of uh, disorder in existing pay as you throw schemes, combined also with the fact that the definition of municipal waste is changing. Now, I mean, as next year, it will be the, the new uh, uh, municipal waste definition from the new waste primary directive, including much more waste flows from um, economic activities, not only from households. That will have a big impact on uh, selective collection schemes and financing schemes. For economic activities, we always say that they should be um, rather financed by the polluter pays principle. It's not like citizens, it should not be paid by taxes. Uh, in addition to EPR schemes, which is a second circuit for financing waste treatment. Uh, so combined with possibly harmonization ideas and changing of definition, we may enter into destabilizing systems that work better and better. A last thing about CO2, uh, which was in the focus on the, the last um, one of the last presentations, waste management sector needs a price, a CO2 price signal to, to show there is a, a, a value uh, in, in paying more for reducing CO2 emissions. Uh, it doesn't mean that the waste management sector should be included in the ETS. We consider it should remain under the um, effort sharing regulation, because all together along the whole waste management, effort sharing regulation forces member states to put in place various measures. Pay collection scheme, pay as you throw can be a measure. Uh, selective collection scheme obligations can be a measure. I mean, a series of measures, including taxation. So incentives, public support, uh, taxation, uh, penalization for um, reducing redu residual waste or disposal, uh, all that series of measures belong to the effort sharing regulation, whereas putting the waste management sector, including the public authorities maybe, 
would be very difficult to manage for an integrated sector where all the activities in the chain belong to the same goal, which is an environmental sound management, uh, recovering recycling as much as possible, uh, having economics in there, which allow not waste, waste to be not only a cost, but a resource, uh, based on public support, which is still needed, uh, attracting private investments. So the price signal, CO2 signal and CO2 regulation is also a crucial thing. That would be my, 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 my thoughts about this uh, presentation. Well, thank, thank you very much. Very, very <laughs> dense and, and, uh, and very interesting um, uh, thoughts about, about those, um, uh, those presentations. I, I'm sure that, that um, uh, I mean, I mean uh, I'm sure that for, for the, the participants as well as, as for me, you know, it's, it's, um, it's very rich, uh, actually, because, uh, you know, we can feel that, that uh, touching upon the organization of um, uh, municipal waste management, the economics, the financing, then, um, uh, looking at the broader picture of obviously the regulation that's around it, uh, we can see that that it's a very very complex issue. I have just uh, I'm uh, mindful of uh, the time. Just, sure, sure, sure. I have a, a last remark. Yeah. Uh, if we want to to increase recycling rates, it's not only about regulating the waste management activities; it's creating a stronger market for recyclates. So it's not the topic of today, but two or three key instruments are mandatory recycled contents in some products, then you have an outlet, then you have visibility for investment. Uh, second, green public procurement, that also increases, that would increase the, the demand for recyclates, uh, and also exports, I mean, intra-EU or extra-EU export of, of safe recyclates or safe materials is needed for having a market as a complement to um, the users that are just around the corner. Well, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, um, uh, Valeria. I think this is this is quite uh, quite comprehensive and, and and giving some ideas, you know, for for next year, obviously, because uh, we we shall be. Uh, uh, I mean, we're just starting uh, the, the the adventure of of waste at the the, the FSR, and and we definitely need to to uh, to explore deeper uh, and, and some uh, very um, uh, focused uh, topics. So. I, I've wrote down, you know, all the ideas and the, 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 the elements that, that you've shared with us. Um, being mind, mindful of the time, because I mean, I know I'm, I'm a terrible uh, time manager, obviously, but being mindful of the time, I just have, uh, Stefan, if you allow me, a, a, a very, very quick questions to our speakers uh, that um, I, I, I would uh, uh, ask and ask them to, to, to answer uh, uh, as shortly as possible. Um, uh, first of all, um, um, maybe Antonio, you, you, you were mentioning some possible solutions, you know, regarding the regulation of what you call the M2. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if in, a, in, a few, uh, in a few sentences you could, uh, you could take us through that, uh, that's the first point. The second point that, that I had written down was about, um, and, and it was um, Ignacy that, that mentioned that uh, in, in the results, you know, uh, where are the economies of scale? You know, we, 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 we lost them uh, on the way. So maybe that also goes back to what uh, Antonio was saying about the fact that uh, this is not a natural monopoly uh, to some extent. I mean, some parts, M1 uh, is not a natural monopoly. And so uh, is it a question of complexity? Is it more complex in, in, in large cities? Uh, is it a question of people being wealthier in, in, uh, in large cities. So what could be uh, the, the explanations, if, if, if any, at this, uh, at this stage? Um, and, and, um, and I have um, uh, uh, to say that I'll stop here with the questions, although you know, I, I, I took three pages of notes, so I have plenty of questions, but I don't want to be um, uh, postponing too, too, too much the, the second session. OK, thank you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you and see. Yes, uh, very, very quickly. I think that, uh, that to summarize what I, I, I said uh, previously, I think that uh, the, uh, the the need for regulation, the market for waste management is thin, because uh, uh, there are uh, there are uh, there is little, uh, still too little scope for trading uh, beyond uh, regional boundaries, and the reason for this uh, is. Uh, uh, let me say a public order problem. So we fear really that uh, too much uh, 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 trading of waste uh, across boundaries uh, could also facilitate uh, uh, illegal transactions uh, or uh, 
bring waste out of control. So my, my idea is uh, to uh, to think of a sort of a two layers market regime, an ordinary regime in which uh, uh, regional actors uh, are in principle asked to uh, to find a, a solution within uh, uh, the, within the self-sufficiency principle, let me say, uh, that is uh, identifying essential facilities and regulating the access to essential, to essential facility using a sort of a capacity payment mechanism, but with the aim of not um, not destroying the the, the 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 competition that might arise from the part the segments of the sector that do not belong to the natural monopoly sphere. So uh, we must be very careful in identifying those few essential facilities that must be uh, that uh, must be uh, put in place in order to match uh, supply and demand. But this is not necessarily possible for all regions. So uh, here, here is where the second layer uh, comes uh, comes uh, out. Uh, our second layer at the moment in Italy is an emergency regime in which uh, uh, those regional actors who cannot succeed in finding a solution are uh, 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 put under an emergency regime in which uh, an, a national uh, a national officer will uh, provide emergency solutions uh, in a sort of a military way, let me say. Uh, my second layer is uh, less military and perhaps uh, more structured as a market. Uh, I th what I think of is something uh, similar conceptually to the electricity uh, 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 day ahead market. Okay, this is an year ahead market that, in the sense that those regions who do not have uh, enough don't know in advance that that will not be able to fit to 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 cope with uh, the flows of next year or cannot provide evidence of this uh, must book uh, some. Uh, uh, spare capacity that the national grid operator will buy on the market and in order to encourage operators to spare some capacity and sell them to the to this national grid we can uh, invent very effective profit sharing uh, schemes uh, which uh, reserve uh, a premium price for the capacity that is uh, supplied to this uh, to this uh, to this um, uh, national level network. Okay, this is more or less the idea. It is difficult to elaborate in a few minutes. Yeah, no, no, uh, <laughs> it will be included in, in in my paper. But I think that uh, unless we uh, think of something like this, a sort of an umbrella solution that uh, uh, operates as a sort of a clearinghouse at the national level, uh, we, uh, we, we we cannot solve the trade-off that I was uh, uh, showing before. Thank, so thank we have you. some regions with an excess capacity and some other regions uh, which are dramatically uh, lacking capacity and are obliged to, re to resort to, uh, to this uh, very opaque and very uh, fuzzy uh, um, uh, trading system uh, uh, across, re across boundaries. Thank you. I, I hope thank I you very you. much, uh, Antonio. So I'll turn to Inasi very, very quickly. Inasi, do you have any any ideas where where, where have the, the the economies of scale where, where have they gone? Uh, well, not sure. I mean, um, when it comes to costs, uh, actually, uh, uh, treatment costs are often charged uh, by the ton. So in that case, it doesn't matter if you are a small or a large uh, municipality. So we don't see economies of, of scale there. But uh, in the case of uh, collection, uh, I mean, they should be there. However, it is quite common also that uh, small and large municipalities uh, merge together to, 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 to collect uh, waste uh, within associations of municipalities and so on. And there often there is a broad subsidy from large municipalities to small municipalities in the sense that they are normally also charged by tone or by or by habit. Actually, um, kind of uh, uh, does not allow to to, to 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 see the economies of scales clearly. But anyway, that refers to costs, not to charges. So I don't have an explanation of why uh, charges are, are higher in, in 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 larger municipalities. To be honest. Well, that, that, that's, that's great. You know, that's an avenue for the future, then. We have to explore that uh, a bit deeper. Well, thank you very much.
I'll um, um, Antonio, I'll, I'll ask you to stop sharing your screen so that. Oh, sorry. Yes. No, it's okay. It's I mean, it's you know. Uh, you so that. Forget I... it. <laughs> no problem. Uh, and then I'll uh, I'll turn the floor to 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 Stefan in a second. Just uh, launching the session number two uh, with a couple of slides, and then uh, it's all yours. So I'll I'll start right away. Uh, once again, setting the scene. So I'll do that. Uh, Quickly, there we are. Okay, so for the bio waste, uh, some facts and figures. Uh, well, about the, the 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 generation of this this bio waste. Um, so as you can see, like two thirds um, uh, of this uh, this bio waste is is generated by uh, at municipal level. Let's say by uh, either uh, household waste or green waste, and and one third uh, coming from uh, industries, uh, and more specifically the the food uh, processing industries. That's that's the figures that that we have. Um, uh, until now, but obviously, you know, the the data, uh, especially data, um, uh, should always be taken uh, with, with caution. So I'm just uh, obviously um, underlining the, the caution that we need to have. Uh, but this is for the, the, the share of generation between uh, municipalities, uh, households, basically, and, and industries. Uh, then for the collection of this bio waste, uh, there are uh, either the separation at source, so really at the, the level of a, of a household or of a community, and there is the, the uh, separately collected uh, bio waste. Um, that can be either really separately collected and, and, and differentiated from the, the, the rest of the uh, municipal solid waste. And there is uh, uh, half of it that is a residual um, municipal solid waste. And the, the separately collection uh, from one country to the other varies from 80% to 10%. 80% being, uh, if I'm remembering properly, uh, Austria, but uh, Johannes Bakas from uh, the, environment, the European Environment Agency will, will maybe uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because this comes out of um, uh, his report uh, that was published uh, just this year. So you can see that, that there is also for bio waste, a variety, uh, a great variety of, uh, of um, levels uh, of collection um, across the EU countries. And, and for the treatment, well, we, we uh, already spoke about um, uh, those two um, um, uh, treatments with the composting on one hand and digestion uh, on the other hand. So as you can see, it's, it's, it's about like 53% of the capacity, of the installed capacity uh, in Europe that are dedicated to composting uh, bio-waste. And uh, uh, around 7% of the, the capacities are uh, installed uh, in, in Europe that are dedicated to uh, digestion. But once again, this, this, uh, this data, uh, they come out of the, 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 um, of the report that uh, Ioannis uh, will be uh, discussing in a few seconds. So th th that's all for me, just for, for setting the scene uh, with regard to bio waste generation, collection and treatment. Stefan, the, the floor is yours. So, yeah, that's true. Maria is a terrible timekeeper. I just confirmed this. So now I need to be very tough with the presentations because uh, we don't want to run too much out of time, especially because I know that many of the people that are connected, they've got some uh, professional obligations, so they will have to, to leave around midday. So let's move right now to the presentation and we move to Yonis uh, Bakas from the European Environment Agency. So Yonis. Could you share your your screen? I'll try to do that immediately. Uh, I hope you can see something now. Can you? Yes. And now, hopefully, it's even full screen. Yes. Okay. Good. Thanks. Thanks for for uh, for inviting me and organizing this quite interesting uh, webinar. Um, I, I thought uh, I would make a, a very short intervention here on on like setting the scene uh, around bio waste management in Europe. And and this, uh, as as Maria just said, uh, it is based on a much larger report we published uh, this summer, where we're trying to to take stock of what's happening in uh, in Europe around bio waste management and separate collection, etc. 
uh, and we call it turning, challenge, turning challenges into opportunities because there are plenty of both of those uh, when it comes to bio waste. Um, but uh, first, just to complement a bit uh, what uh, Maria setting the scene slides uh, were about. Um, I, just give me a minute because I can't see my screen because I can see the zoom. Okay, so I think by waste now we have to, to look at it in a different lens compared to the past. And this is the lens or the perspective, if you prefer, of the circular economy. Uh, circular economy is a new framework for, for waste management, uh, focusing a lot more than before in, in trying to keep the materials value and the materials weight or volumes in the economy as long as possible. Uh, and this, of course, applies to all kinds of materials, including uh, bio-waste, uh, for example. And, and uh, just to mention here that the Circular Economy Action Plan that was published in March this year uh, includes the agri-food sector as a priority sector, and therefore the bio-waste management is also a priority, let's say, activity, economic activity for, for the circular economy. But uh, what is it, this bio-waste we're talking about? Well, in the, in the definition we're giving, it's, uh, it's about not biodegradable materials in general, because, for example, that would include paper, but it's about biodegradable garden and park waste and also food and kitchen waste. This type of, of uh, waste comes, originates from many different sources, practically whatever you can think of that handles uh, food or, or, or garden waste is a source for, for this kind of waste, man, uh, waste generation. Households, offices, restaurants, canteens, uh, uh, supermarkets, food processing plants, they all generate food waste, yeah? Now, more specifically, what happens to it and how much is there in Europe? Uh, we surveyed the European Environment Agency member countries, and that's a bit the, of a wider group than the EU. Uh, we have members that are outside the EU. And uh, what we came up with is that there is about 490 kilograms of bio-waste generated within the municipal waste stream every year per capita. Uh, so for each of each European citizen. And uh, th th um, that total municipal waste includes about a third of bio-waste. So the, the total of bio-waste generated per capita is 170 kilograms uh, per, per year. What happens to it? Out of this 170 kilograms, around 70 are collected separately, leading to other composting facilities or anaerobic digestion plants mainly. And the, the rest of it, the rest 100, let's say, uh, no, 97, okay, let's say 100 kilos are collected together with residual uh, mixed municipal waste. Um, lately, again, in the context of the circular economy, the, the Waste Framework Directive, that is the main piece of legislation we have at EU for regulating waste management, is, uh, has been amended in 2018. And it has uh, given a lot more focus now on bio-waste. Um, the, the, first of all, there's an overarching target for recycling uh, of municipal waste, uh, that is 55% uh, for 2025 and goes up to 65% in 2035, which is quite ambitious. And uh, in order to support this target, there's a, a, a provision for separately collecting bio-waste um, or ensuring recycling at source. This is a hint to home composting practically by 2023. And of course, there's a call for collecting data in order to monitor how things are going about uh, food waste. If you take a close look at this diagram in the middle, you will realize that the 65% target, okay, it's really far away from now, it's in 15 years, but still, it's practically impossible to reach if you don't separately collect bio-waste. And this has been kind of indirectly in acknowledged in the legislation at EU level, that if you are to reach really high recycling levels, just because of the big share of bio-waste in the municipal waste, you really need to, to invest in, in uh, separately collecting bio-waste and, and properly treating that. In a more international context, we have uh, like the guiding principles of the Sustainable Development Goals. One of those includes the halving food waste ambition by 2030. And this has to do not with the management of bio-waste, but uh, more on, the, on preventing bio-waste. Now, this is uh, more probably 
like uh, what what is likely to happen in the future but let's see now what happens right now in uh, in in Europe uh, regarding bio waste separate collection uh, in this graph you can see that there is really many different levels of uh, separate collection across countries in Europe some countries are already now starting to implement separate collection and therefore have very low capture rates and by capture rate, I mean how much of the generated bio waste is, is uh, separately collected. And some other countries, let's say the, the ones above the thin blue line, which is the, the average capture rate, um, yeah, they're doing pretty well because they have system, systems uh, in, for, for separate collection in place for a very long time. And uh, yes, Maria, you, you were correct. Austria is, is uh, managing to collect uh, the most out of its generated bio waste. However, um, and you, you can also see that even the, the, the right side countries uh, that are performing relatively well, they have still a large room for improvement. Uh, maybe they collect 50 or 60 percent of the generated, but they still can, can improve a lot more and, and reach the levels of, uh, let's say, Slovenia and Austria. So there's a room for improvement and increased recycling of municipal waste based on bio waste management uh, for pretty much all of the countries. And, uh, and with that, I would like to finish my short intervention. And uh, if you want to find out more, there's a link here. I don't know if the presentations will be shared in the end, but the, the link to the, the big report we published where you can find a lot more information about uh, the specifics and also some proposals on, on how to, to improve things. So thanks a lot. Thank you very much for your presentation. Very clear, very interesting to just uh, put the topic on the table and to discuss. Let's move to the second presentation right now. So let's move to Alessandro Marangoni. Alessandro here and ready to share your screen. Yeah. Uh, just. Mm. From, uh, from uh, Yoni's presentation, that Spain was at a very low level of uh, collecting. Okay. No way. So the floor is yours. Everything is perfect. Okay. Sorry. Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, I try to stay in the sign uh, time given we have on on late. Economics of bio waste uh, stream. Uh, um, to better understand uh, this topic, uh, uh, some uh, brief hints uh, to the waste management and landscape. Um, everybody uh, knows that uh, the waste management industry is uh, changing. We are in a phase. In, we are in a phase of transformation, both in in Europe and uh, and worldwide, uh, and both in the industrial structure and in uh, in uh, in the policies. Uh, however, the trend toward the circular economy is overcoming the, the current uh, configuration of market and is uh, reshaping the, the industry and the landscape. Uh, and um, even before the, the pandemic crisis and uh, the, the tools that UE uh, put in place to face, uh, to cope with, with the crisis, uh, uh, the, the UE Green Deal uh, uh, drive a change in business strategies uh, and uh, push uh, a, a new round of, uh, of investments. Uh, by way, separate collection we have seen uh, in uh, the previous uh, presentation is, uh, is growing uh, in, uh, in many countries uh, and these uh, drive uh, significant changes in uh, waste management both uh, in, in a technological point of view and uh, in uh, the player's uh, uh, strategies. At the same time, the, the, the separate collection, uh, treatment, and recycling of, of bio-waste uh, uh, affecting uh, in deep the value chain structure, as well as the economies on, on the industry. So that the reason why we are today talking about economics of, of, of bio-waste. So um, bio waste is, uh, let's say, a, a long story. And if we look uh, back in time, uh, 
um, once upon a time, uh, the, the chain of uh, bio waste management started, as everybody knows, from separate collection treatment, that means uh, mainly biomechanical treatment, uh, composting, uh, and incineration and, uh, and landfill. So um, one time ago, the focus was on treatment, on composting, and unfortunately on the landfill. This involved uh, uh, relevant cost for separate collection that was just uh, in a phase of, let's say, startup. Uh, and uh, these also uh, involve uh, uh, non negligible cost in, in treatments. Composting, uh, the answer is it depends. <laughs> uh, there are, of course, some costs and there are revenues. But in the first phases of development of uh, composting, uh, quality was not so high and uh, was uh, really uh, difficult to find, to market the, the, the product. So the revenues was basically low. Incineration uh, for uh, plants uh, owners uh, was, of course, a good uh, revenue stream, but not for a uh, taxpayer, let's say. And the landfill, the same story, a lot of revenues for uh, uh, the owners, but not for uh, uh, the, the citizen. So to sum up, low separate collection rate with startup cost, biomechanical treatment, low quality of compost in the first phase with narrow markets, and uh, a not negligible share to land. Fortunately, the landscape changed a lot in the last uh, in the last year, and now in the future, uh, the chain of bio waste uh, management uh, changing uh, a lot. Treatment uh, is uh, decreasing, and incineration too is uh, decreasing because now the focus is to make separate collection growth and uh, composting uh, and all the treatment uh, that uh, means no more only composting but uh, uh, the production of biogas uh, that means uh, generating power and heat uh, the biomethane that is really a, a game changer now and also the development of, uh, of new material this of course uh, impacts a lot on um, the economics the cost of separate collection uh, has been decreasing uh, because of uh, economies of scale and, uh, and density. Um, also, the, the cost related to treatment decreased because uh, um, there is a lower share of waste that has this uh, uh, destination. And on the contrary, uh, the phase of treatment that involves no more only composting, but all of the other solution makes revenues increase a lot. Also, as we will see in the next chart, uh, due to some subsidies. Uh, the revenues, uh, on the contrary, uh, will uh, decrease in absolute terms for uh, landfill because it uh, was lower the share uh, uh, that uh, went to, to landfill, even if uh, the um, cost per ton uh, increased due to the reduction of the available capacity. So high separate collection with lower cost, biomechanical mm, treatment is decreasing, high quality compost and uh, waste to energy technologies uh, uh, changing the, the game, and uh, uh, landfill function is, uh, is decreasing. Is decreasing. So um, all of this uh, this change in the in the competitive framework in, in the market has uh, important impacts on the players' uh, strategies. Um, two issues uh, mainly drive the company's uh, strategies: uh, uh, technological innovation and uh, recycling of uh, materials. These uh, involve uh, very relevant uh, uh, trends and changes in, in the waste management market. Uh, there was uh, an evident trend toward the value chain integration. Waste management companies increasingly 
uh, in Italy and, and in Europe uh, of combining collection, treatment, and recycling of material. And uh, companies uh, have been investing more and more in new plants uh, and also in uh, M&A activities with the aim of increasing their treatment capacity for bio-waste. This, of course, also in addition to the other materials like plastics and, uh, and there is a growing convergence of, of sector, a convergence uh, uh, inside the waste business uh, between urban, uh, municipal and industrial uh, waste, uh, and the convergence of different utility sector like energy and, and waste. And also, that's uh, the new elements in the very last years, uh, uh, among different industries. Uh, leveraging on technological skin and economy of scale. This brought uh, the entry of new players from other sectors like oil and gas, engineering, chemical, and also financial uh, investors. Of course, uh, technological innovation is the real uh, game theme changer. So, uh, innovation is uh, a key point. Uh, uh, it's the element that makes uh, bioeconomy uh, viable. Uh, research uh, will be is and will become increasingly crucial to push the growth of recycling of collecting material and to find the new markets. Uh, alliances between different players are growing. R and D, new products and markets are the, the objectives and uh, a, a driving role of oil and gas and chemical players in the search of new material and fuel, starting from bio-waste, uh, is uh, uh, arising. So uh, research is the disruptive uh, elements, and the new technological frontiers are becoming real. Biomethane is already a, a common solution, a, a widespread solution. Waste to fuel is developing and the role of uh, oil and gas companies is relevant. Um, let's think to ENI uh, new strategies in circular economy in the last couple of, uh, of years. Uh, hydrogen and uh, waste uh, to, to material. So uh, going straight to, to uh, the impacts on, uh, on economics, uh, uh, there are, of course, two levels, the, the business level and the uh, system level. In, in the point of view of companies, uh, financial performance, we can profit of avoided treatment cost. Uh, we have uh, subsidies uh, from biomethane, revenues from energy generation, and avoided landfill cost. And, of course, new uh, business opportunities. And uh, the waste management system has a wool. Uh, we have, of course, the benefit of recovery and recycling of resources. Uh, we have environmental, uh, avoided environmental costs. Let's think uh, uh, of landfill impacts and the reduction of tariff to, to, to consumers. Just to give you a, a real uh, idea, uh, some figures about uh, a, a business case of, uh, of a biomethane uh, uh, plants. Uh, I don't want to bore you with all the, the detail. I go uh, straight to, uh, to the conclusion. The conclusion is uh, a profitable investment. Let's uh, only look at uh, an IRR unlevered of 16%. This is a huge return on investment comparable to the first phase of, uh, for instance, the photovoltaic plants uh, uh, some years ago and the payback period uh, short enough uh, given uh, the uh, terms, uh, the, the useful lifetime of the plant and the time period of uh, uh, the subsidies. Uh, of course, uh, plant size matters. Of course, uh, subsidies boost the financial performance. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, uh, as financial knowledge leverage can improve uh, even more the return on, uh, on equity. 
So to, uh, to sum up, what's the, the, the conclusion? The conclusion is that uh, uh, at present, uh, bio-waste uh, management is uh, for sure an opportunity, but uh, we have also to face some all the new uh, challenges. Um, huge investment in R&D are needed and uh, without subsidies, for instance, for biomethan, uh, uh, the return is in the mid-long term. Um, the profitability on the investment is also affected by the uh, cycles of the global uh, common markets. Let's uh, uh, think to the uh, volatility of um, oil and gas uh, and gas prices. And uh, is also very important uh, the uh, availability of a market for recycled product. Let's uh, uh, talk about uh, the uh, compost worst case in, uh, in, um, in the past. Uh, there is also a, a relevant change in, in the market situation because the entrance of new players from the chemical and oil and uh, gas uh, uh, business uh, uh, increase the competition for the feedstock procurement. That's uh, exactly the case of, uh, of the bio waste. So to conclude, uh, don't forget that uh, in Italy, but I understand not only in, in Italy, uh, permitting uh, bureaucracy and social uh, acceptance restrain the development of plants and these uh, is uh, unfortunately also for uh, uh, bio waste uh, uh, plants, uh, so uh, increasing uh, uh, the cost. So, permitting innovation and value chain integration are the drivers to make uh, bio waste stream uh, uh, profitable. Sorry if I run very fast to stay in the time. I anyway do hope that uh, everything is clear. I thank you again for the invitation. Of course, I'm available for any, for any question or uh, clarification. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Alessandro, for your presentation. Uh, waiting for the next speaker to put the slide online. It's, uh, it's very interesting. It's, uh, it is very clear that we are in a changing field with innovation that is driving a lot of things. And that we need, maybe we see, we already see, but we need also to think about how the value chain uh, is organized and should evolve. Uh, and, and of course, all this is a big challenge for regulation, if any, uh, to think about how to, to regulate properly uh, bio waste management. Thank you very much. So let's move to David Newman. So David Newman from World Biogas Association. The floor is yours. You've got five minutes. Uh, good morning, uh, everybody. Well, talking in five minutes about these complex subjects is very difficult. Uh, I will do my best. Um, I just want to introduce you to myself uh, because it's relevant to this discussion. I've been involved in uh, bio waste uh, collection and treatment now for more than 20 years um, and helped set up a system in, in Italy, which uh, some of you have talked about. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a business that I know very, very well indeed. And I'm actually going to come to it from a different point of view to the rest of the speakers uh, this morning. Uh, I agree with Alessandro. We're in a time of great transition and there's a lot of confusion out there. We forget that we are actually into the fourth industrial revolution. We may not see that industrial revolution because it's happening in, 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 in cyberspace. Um, but it's, it, we are into the Industrial Revolution, and of course, the Fourth Industrial Revolution, of course, that impacts those who were the beneficiaries of the First, the Second, and Third Industrial Revolutions, because the Fourth Industrial Revolution will put a lot of them out of business. Um, and so, uh, the, the, uh, let's not forget that the First, and Second, and Third Industrial Revolution have caused some of the environmental challenges which we are living through today, climate change, pollution, uh, loss of topsoil, uh, and, a, and an absolutely disastrous food production and consumption system. Um, so let's hope that the fourth and maybe the fifth industrial revolution that we are going, we will go through, will sort some of those things out. Um, so we're in a global transition, um, and the, the, the global transition will mean that we have to um, excuse me, I have a building site near here, so excuse the background noise. 
Um, the, the, the global transition that will, that will mean that food waste is a critical element, not only to reducing greenhouse gas emissions and waste management, but also to getting our source systems worked out. And, and whilst composting was until recently, and Alexandra pointed that out, considered almost to be a backyard hobby and not a major industrial solution, uh, today, the way in which we recover food waste is core to a whole series of solutions to this global transition. And we've talked about the social economy. Well, I, I remind everybody of the Ella MacArthur butterfly because we don't talk enough about the left-hand side of that butterfly, the biosphere. We talk about the technical materials, the mechanosphere, because I think all us, as little boys, we played around with toys, we put them together, but we actually didn't play around in the mud, and that's because we all live in cities. So we sort of fail to understand how important that biosphere is. But that biosphere is where everything comes from. Our life support systems, our health, our food, our water, our air. It will not make the slightest bit of difference to humanity whether we recycle another million tons of plastic or not. But it will make a total difference to the future of humanity whether we get organic carbon back to soil. Um, uh, what, how are we doing? Well, the uh, data presented by the colleague from the EEA were interesting because he talks about bio-waste. Uh, but we have to talk about bio-waste separating out food and garden waste. Um, and if we look at food waste separately, we can see that only 16% of food waste across the EU is currently intercepted and treated. Okay, so roughly 85% is still sent to landfill and incineration. So there's a fantastic opportunity there for industry in the food waste section, of course, also in garden waste. And of that food waste, which is currently captured in the EU 27, two thirds of it is captured in Italy. Two thirds of it, because we started this process off 25 years ago, is captured in Italy and around about 100 kilos per inhabitant, which is why I asked Patrick from Munster uh, what his interception rate is, and it's around about 54 kilos. So we have a lot to learn from Italy, and, and I will talk about this a minute because it's very important for the whole economic structure of the way in which we collect bio-waste. Because Italy gets a lot of that bio-waste back to soil through composting. It, it, it extracts the digest uh, the 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 the, CO, the, the, the biogas. We make uh, renewable energy. Alessandra has shown all that. We know all that. But above all, we are getting in Italy the example of huge amounts of organic carbon going back to soil. And to do that, we worked out in Italy many years ago that we need that organic carbon to be clean. There's no point putting back to soil materials which are polluting soils. Um, and so. The problem that Italy had and was up until, until a few years ago, the enormous cost of extracting plastics from food and garden waste collections. Now you have the data there, even today with very, very low purity, the Italians estimate that the cost to extracting plastics from AD and compost plants is around about 100 million euro a year. And this is with very, very low uh, contaminate rate, contamination rates of around one and a half percent of plastics overall. And that is because in 2010, we introduced the law in Italy that all food waste has to be collected either with reusable containers or with compostable bags. Now, I personally wrote that law. And that law has been a game changer for Italian bio waste collection because it has enabled contamination levels to go, go down. It's still a problem. It's a 100 million euro a year problem. But what would it have been had we been collecting our bio waste with plastics? Well, let's do the maths. Let's look at what's happening in the rest of Europe. And even if we were to consider the rest of Europe with these low contamination levels, that's about a, works out at about a billion dollars, a billion euro a year. Now, that's a disaster for the whole bio waste industry. Very good news for incineration. Uh, good news for those who still got residual space in landfills, but a disaster for anaerobic digestion and composting. So look out for this. Um, if the impurity levels were not 1.5% as they are in Italy, but were roughly 5% as they are in Northern Europe, and even uh, up to and over 15% in Spain, well, 
I estimate that the cost to the biowaste system of transferring plastic from biowaste to incineration could be as much as two and a half billion billion euro a year. So that's a transfer of money from biowaste collections to incineration, which we do not foresee and we, we have not understood. So beware of this. And I specifically say this to the Environmental Agency and to, and to um, public officials, and I've said this to the European Commission, you do not take this into account when you uh, tell countries to collect their bio-waste. You do not take the consequences into account, both environmentally in terms of the plastic going to soil, is here's plastics going to soil, these photographs taken by the uh, Environment Agency in the UK, um, and uh, more plastics are going to soil than going to oceans. And a lot of that is going through compost and digesting. So take this into consideration. Um, here is what an average European and British bio-waste collection looks like. It looks like mixed waste. And the Environment Agency in the UK estimates that even with low food waste collections that we have now, roughly 100,000 tonnes of bioplastic, of microplastics are going to soil. This is a collection in uh, Catalonia. This is bio-waste. You wouldn't believe it, would you? But this is a bio-waste collection in Catalonia. Uh, so they have here, and I'm sorry I've lost the text here, but roughly 22% contamination of plastic bags. We have to get these plastic bags and we have to get plastics out of food waste if you want to do your food waste properly, if you want to get those, uh, or that organic carbon back to soil, whether it's through digestate or whether it's through composting. But above all, if you want to treat this stuff, you can't treat plastic in a bio-waste plant. It doesn't work. Um, and that is a huge risk uh, which uh, the industry is facing, and I want you to be aware of that. And we need to act now uh, to mandate a similar law to Italy's law that we wrote 10 years ago to ensure the purity of food waste collections. Uh, there's a load of sources you can go to to find that, um, to find that data, uh, but um, you can also find it by sending me an email. I will be very happy to share all the files that I have on, on soil contamination of plastics. It is a growing problem. And the fact that these plastics are now getting into our food through soil is now understood by science. It's a nice little book I wrote about these issues. Um, if you brought over the Christmas holidays, please read it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very interesting presentation. So um, I, I feel sorry, but we are already running out of time and there is some people that are warning me about this. We've got uh, one last presentation. So Maria, could you, could, could you, could you confirm me that Davide, Tony. Davide, I, I, I'm not. I'm not seeing Davide unless. Um, I am here. Speakers. Yes. There are two speakers with. Uh... Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. Because you haven't been renamed, sort of. So, so, so to me, you yeah, appear as. There a... are two. I'm not sure which one I should rename. If you could open your camera, if you kindly could open your camera, it would make things easier for us. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Davide. So, uh, then you have the floor. Yes, for five minutes. We're already running out of time now. Uh, so I thought you were not there. That's why, that's why I was so cool with the previous presenters. <laughs> Go on. Share your screen if you've got some slides. Yes. Thank you. Can you see my screen? Okay. Can you see my screen? Nope. Not yet, Davide. I suggest you click on share screen and select the um, preview of the PPT file that should be already on your desktop. Okay, wait. So be before, better if you open it already on your desktop and then select. Yes. Perfect. It's taking um, a moment, oh, sorry. Okay, so share screen. Yes, so you should now be able to see my screen, I think. Yes. Can you see it now? Yeah, you can go ahead.
so it was perfect but uh, it was good yeah okay it, it you were uh, the thing is that i i lose your audio therefore i don't know if uh, if you're getting my presentation or not if you're seeing it uh, we are seeing your presentation sure. and you may uh, you can hear me right yes confirm okay so i'm going to do the same and uh, and i will start talking okay just give me a second Perfect. Okay. Well, um, thank you for inviting me. My, my name is Davide Tonini from the J Joint Research Center of the European Commission. And uh, I will try to walk you through the, the issue of economics of value waste from a different perspective, the perspective of the life cycle costing which is a tool very much in use here at the Joint Research Center in, in general within the Commission to assess the performance of waste management systems. What is the life cycle costing approach? So basically we calculate the total cost of a system throughout the entire life cycle. For a waste, this starts at the disposal and then ends with, with it from the disposal from the citizen and ends when the waste is recycled or incinerated. If you have a linear system, you can imagine a, a bin where the citizen disposes the waste, then a collection, incineration, or landfill that produces energy. And the energy is sent to the market to um, displace other forms of energy, for instance, produced from fossil fuels or uh, uh, conventional sources. If you have a circular system uh, where we recover, uh, we, we attempt to recover materials, you may imagine a stronger collection system, an increased effort in uh, transport, uh, an increased effort in separation, the production of a product that then is sent to the market to displace conventional products. So both systems have pros and cons in terms of the savings that we can achieve and burdens upstreams. The idea of the life cycle approach is to account for all effects throughout the life cycle. For this, we use software and databases, uh, and uh, these are kind of engineering softwares generally. And the, the final aim is to inform policymakers on the socioeconomic consequences of uh, the decisions in, in the endeavor of reaching better regulations. Mm, I'll try to walk you through a few examples that we just performed on cities in Europe, for instance, Amsterdam. Amsterdam today incinerates 95% of the food waste, so there is no collection. Um, as also was mentioned earlier, some of the cities, some of the places in Europe have poor performance. Um, the, the current uh, cost is around 130 euro per ton to treat the bio waste, which is just incinerated together with the residual waste. If you go for alternative systems, you may incur very, very high expenses, up to 100 euro per ton, additional to what you expend today. So conventional cost may be a problem, may be a problem in terms of uh, switching from uh, and, and, and a system that do not separate, systems that do not separate to systems that uh, attempt to, to recover resources from food waste. Um, home compost and incineration are the cheapest options. There are conventional costs higher for all the remaining alternatives, generally. And we see the same result for all, for other cities. This is not just the case of Amsterdam. This is just an example, but it's applicable to other cities. We also um, could, uh, this is just another example. Uh, we, uh, that uh, what was mentioned earlier, we can produce products from bio waste. Yes, but what's the cost of producing these products, these high, high value products, for instance, lactic acid or animal feed or polylactic acid, which is a base for, for plastic. Well, you can incur very high, cost compared to uh, simply incinerating the waste, right? So we have a problem here, it seems, a problem in terms of conventional cost. But what is the trick um, and what we, this is my, the, let's say the main point of my presentation, what we should always remember, and it was mentioned earlier, but we tried now to, to translate it into math in a way. Uh, traditionally, we, we think waste uh, only for its, uh, mm, uh, for the, uh, we see waste management for the waste function, waste treatment function that uh, it's providing, treating the waste, not leaving it, leaving it on the street. However, we should today remember and keep it always in mind in our assessments that we want to deliver a product on top of the waste management function. The way we, we, we have to look at the system, therefore, is that for any additional resource that we recover for waste, 
the net cost would be the, the current production cost, what we generally calculate in economic terms, minus what we call the avoided treatment cost. The avoided treatment cost is the, the, the technology that would be displaced marginally by recycling an additional unit of product. So if you take, for instance, the struvite, which is a fertilizer, it was mentioned earlier uh, in, in the presentation just, just before mine, uh, the value of fertilizers uh, that are uh, re, uh, returned to land, well, if you take the struvite production cost today from bio waste is around 17 euro per ton per, per kilo product, which makes it very high compared to, a, to the linear product in the market, which is 1.3 euro. This is a normal phosphorus fertilizer today, 1.3 euro per kilo. Well, but if, if we accounted for the avoided treatment cost, we would get down to one euro per kilo. And this is even less than the, 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 than the traditional product in the market. So the, the product is competitive once we account for the avoided treatment cost, which is not, uh, in many studies, nothing not accounted for. If we then include the externality cost and we go down to, uh, we go to the, to the true so such, so social cost of the product by including, by internalizing external cost, then we, we get even uh, better results as, ex as expected. In conclusion, uh, I hope I was uh, uh, quite brief and clear on my point. Um, bio waste separate, separate treatment is more expensive than uh, the traditional treatment. Conventional costs are higher. However, there are effects on uh, the quality of other streams that are typically not accounted for. I think it was mentioned in the presentation just before mine about impurities. This is something that is not accounted for. The impurities that come together with the, with the bio waste and, uh, um, uh, and create problems to the entire waste management system. This, this cost is attributed uh, to bio waste, but maybe should be attributed to the plastic. Uh, business models and, and instruments uh, many times do not account for the avoided treatment cost, which I just showed in my earlier slide and internalizing externalities then further reduce the total cost of uh, products generated from uh, food waste or bio waste um, i just want to highlight these these three points which i think are, are important uh, we, we keep on seeing uh, studies quantitative studies that do not account for uh, the avoided cost of uh, of um, of treatments um, studies that uh, use other types of allocation and uh, get misleading results on the true cost of treating food waste. If you have further questions, uh, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Davide, for your presentation. Very interesting. Uh, it raises a question of how you measure all those avoided costs and, and uh, externalities you are trying to measure so so that's very interesting it would be very interesting to to go into the details of your of your work obviously so thank you very much to everybody i already see that uh, people are leaving because we are running out of time is there any questions maybe we've got two two to five minutes to take some questions may, may i stefan this is david newman speaking okay. Um, the, the question really, Alessandro, is for Alessandro. Are you still with us, Alessandro? Yeah. I'm... Yeah. Hi, hi, Alessandro. Nice to see you again. Um, the, the whole focus of your presentation was on energy, and, and therefore the, the value which bio waste treatment can uh, obtain through energy production, so biomethane, biogas, even electricity, burning biogas, etc. But there, uh, you, you, you talked about the very low value of, of, of carbon and the very low value of compost. But don't you think that that is an area where the, the legislator has missed a beat because we desperately need that organic carbon to go back to soil, both as a carbon sink for greenhouse gas purposes, but also because we, are, we need to replace topsoil. And so whilst we don't price in the externalities, but we give huge incentives to energy, we don't give any incentives to, to organic carbon recovery. Don't you think that's somewhere where we're missing something? Yes. Yes. Thank you, David, for, for, the, for the question. Uh, first of all, I focus uh, on uh, energy and biomethane uh, to have a short presentation <laughs> due, due to time. Anyway, I, I agree. In fact, uh, uh, first, uh, I underline uh, the contribution of the subsidy to the business uh, 
case of, uh, of biomethane. And uh, um, second, I highlight that uh, uh, the, 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 let's say, the worst case of, of the compost situation in, uh, in the past. Um, everybody knows that uh, uh, there is a, a contribution from uh, the management of bio waste also to the soil fertilization and uh, to other very important uh, issues concerning uh, uh, environment. And uh, uh, last but not least, uh, uh, the business case uh, is, uh, of course, uh, a, a financial point of view, a financial case. But uh, as I have explained in the in a chart, there is a, a, a corporate level and the waste management system has a wool level. So, of course, in the business case, externalities are not included. While as in the last presentation, for instance, of uh, Taparini, he, he underlines uh, that issues uh, too. So, uh, yes, uh, I agree with you. Uh, the overall issues is very complex and is a, a puzzle with many pieces. I go straight to one of the issues, but uh, this means that uh, the other you mentioned are not uh, as important as well. It is time to, to conclude the workshop. Yeah, I, I, before concluding the workshop, I, I'll just ask uh, Davide to stop sharing his screen because I was I was wondering what what's, what was going to pop up, you know, from your screen. Thanks a lot, Davide. It was a sort of happening, you know, like <laughs> online happening. Thanks a lot, Davide. Yeah, well, I I had a um, you know obviously some some um, some questions that I wanted to share with um uh, with uh, some of the panelists because I, I wanted to have uh, um, the, the 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 insights you know of uh, uh, for instance either uh, Valérie Plain Maison or uh, Patrick uh, Hesenkamp on the microplastic and impurities uh, issue um, in the in the in the waste uh, for the bio waste uh, separate collection and have you know really like like uh, the the operators whether public or private have their their insight on the question but obviously unfortunately we're running out of out of time to do that. We'll have, uh, fortunately, uh, some more time next year to, to, to touch upon these subjects and, 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 and many more. But having the, the, the full picture about bio waste, the uh, avoided cost, uh, externalities, uh, the issue of impurities, uh, and how they are reflected in, in, uh, economically and in which waste stream they are being reflected, all of that is definitely uh, some uh, food for thought for the, 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 the future. So I was uh, just going to thank all the panelists uh, for attending, for contributing, uh, and, and obviously for their presentation with um, a great value added. Uh, that shows us that there is so much uh, to discuss and, and, and to, to work on. So uh, next year, we, we'll, um, we'll be uh, diving uh, uh, some more into all the, these, uh, these uh, subjects. Um, as uh, was mentioned um, at, at the beginning of the event, uh, we plan to have the presentations uh, of the speakers, if, uh, if obviously they, uh, they agree with that, you know, in PDF format uh, made available on the web page. Uh, of the event on the FSR webpage, uh, along with this um, a quick uh, fact and figures um, document that was put together prior to the um, to the event, um, and uh, well, basically, stay tuned for more um, um, uh, work and, and and webinars and exchanges on the the the, the topics. Uh, that, that concern municipal uh, solid waste management, uh, because uh, 2021 will, will definitely be um, uh, a year where we will uh, we, we'll do some more um, on those uh, on those topics. So, uh, Maria, Fabio, last word, yeah. Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, no, just uh, to inform that uh, uh, all participants that we are, as the Italian